everyone, and welcome to another episode of Orgasmic Living. I am your host, Patty Alfonso, creator of the Orgasmic Body Love Experience and Pole Dancing for Consciousness. And this episode is going to be slightly different, but just as amazing as all of the rest, because today I have two guests playing with me. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, one of my guests is May Tom. She is a certified functional medicine practitioner and a registered dietitian. She coaches high achieving people on how to transform their health without gimmicks and quick fixes. That's literally my favorite part because I am so tired of gimmicks and quick fixes. And then I also have with me today, AJ Pellegrino. He is a certified health coach and also my beloved partner in love and creation. He is absolutely brilliant at empowering people to make better choices with their bodies, with their health, with their mindset, with their food, with all the things. I know he's empowering me daily on all kinds of magic and deliciousness. So I am super excited. I'm going to go ahead and bring everyone on here. So we're going to have a little quick little shift in, in <laughs> hi, May, how are you? Hi, <laughs> I'm doing great. Hey, I'm so excited. And hi, AJ. Hi. Nice to see you from, you know, down there <laughs> in the living room. <laughs> Um, so I do want to start with what my usual question is in this season of orgasmic living. And I would love for both of you to respond to this and then we'll see where the conversation goes. So May, you go first. What is orgasmic living to you? Oh, that's such a good question. I just want to give some backstory. Yes. So if you were to ask me even 10 years ago, I've been married for 10 years. So if you were to ask me 10 years ago, I would have cringed at answering this question because it just, the word makes, I'm, I'm so conservative. It would have made me uncomfortable because of the connotations I thought of um, prior to being married and having lots of life happen. And so now I can say one of my top experiences that blew my mind on what orgasmic living means was birthing three beautiful babies naturally. And, uh, I have never had such an amazing high in my life. And so when I think about those highs, I think about being fully present in your body mm. and fully connected to everything your body is feeling and going through. Mm. And so many times because of the past or because of presently things we're dissatisfied about, we we kind of detach ourselves from our body and we're going along with our body, but we're not really fully in tune and we're not really fully present. And so birthing, I know not everyone has this experience and I know today's not about, you know, talking to all the moms out there who are pregnant, but I think birthing forces you, <laughs> it forces you, literally forces you to be fully present with your body because your body's like, dude, I'm going on this amazing roller coaster ride and you can't check out on me. <laughs> You have got to be here with me. And it just, I literally told women after my first birth experience, like I would get pregnant just to give birth again, because it was so awesomely wow. orgasmic, That's if you will. Incredible, May. I, you know, have been asking this question in the show and none, no one has given that answer yet. So first of all, <laughs> for bringing this new energy and this new perspective to um, orgasmic living. And I know that there's a whole movement out there called orgasmic birthing. And I, I love what you said about just being really present with your body and in tune with your body. And before we go to AJ, I actually would love, I really appreciate your vulnerability in like, if you'd asked me this question 10 years ago, I would have been really uncomfortable. Can you talk, can you talk a little bit about that? Cause that's actually part of my passion, right? And purpose and mission with orgasmic living is to really break down those energies that like make us go, ah, ooh, I can't talk about that, right? Like anywhere where we have shame or anywhere where we've decided something is taboo or it's not okay to talk about, right? Um, so I'm super curious, like, if I had asked you 10 years ago, why would you have had that reaction? Like what comes up for you? You said conservative. So could you just say a little bit more about that? Sure. So I grew up in an obviously Asian family, first kind of first generation here, and also grew up 
very Christian and I am Christian. And I feel like in my family, like I remember again, maybe this is too much vulnerability, but I remember the day, (laughs) the day I got my period, I came home and I was like, mom, it happened. And she was like, it was in the driveway. I had just gotten off the bus and she was like, like hushed me and like ushered me inside the house. Like it was like shameful. And I mean, I know she didn't mean to do anything that would make me feel uncomfortable, but I thought it was a celebratory kind of like thing that happened to me. And from that, it was like, you don't talk about that. You don't, you don't celebrate that. Like, so, I mean, (laughs) it's funny, but like in, I think in the Asian culture, a lot of anything related to like vulnerable body things or life things. I mean, it's just culturally not really on the surface and how you learn about these things is also kind of like hush, hush. Like yeah. it's, it's just, just a little odd to me now, but I'm like, well, that's the culture I grew up in. And, um, I mean, it's funny, but you know, even preparing for marriage, like I had close friends have those conversations with me, like what that would look like. And I remember on my wedding day, my mom was like, uh, did you know what to do? And, you know, and I was like, mom, this is like a little too late, you know, (laughs) but it just, she never like probably her mom never prepared her and had these open conversations about what it meant to be a female and go through all these stages of life. And so I just, I guess I was just so naive 10 years ago of like, I, and even like very tomboyish growing up. So like even embracing, like, I don't have curves, but even embracing the little curves I have, like I was really self-conscious until I kind of blossomed as a married woman and went through having kids and what, you know, all the changes my body went through, um, really allowed me to like explore what it meant. What, what is this God-given body I've been given? And I'm supposed to be in it. I'm not supposed to be detached, you know? And so I think also in my journey as a person helping other women, um, I just realized so much of our health issues comes from that disconnect. Um, yeah. We're just like expecting our body to do something and beating it up half the time and not understanding it and not listening to it. And the, the communication is broken down. So even 10 years ago, I wasn't even that in touch with my own health. Mm-hmm. So I definitely had like, well, this is me, this is who I'm supposed to be. And there was definitely some dissonance of like who I really was and where I really was at. And I just, there wasn't um, a lot of reconciliation and I've just done a lot of reconciling over the years for myself and for other people. So I love that. And I think, you know, that that's a big part of why we become you know, coaches and healers is because there we discover the disconnect within ourselves. And when we work on it, and when we get like right with ourselves and right with our bodies and right with, with our energy, then we're like, oh my God, everybody needs to have this. So then we hang up our shingle. We're like, come on, <laughs> look at this magic. So I, I really, again, I appreciate your, your vulnerability. And, and I just want to acknowledge like, uh, the pattern disruptor that you were in your family. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like that a lot too. And I love that you came home and you're like, I got my period. And then your mom's <laughs> like, oh no, like that probably changed her whole life in that moment. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Thank you, May, yeah. um, for sharing all of that. And then uh, we'll see where, where this conversation goes because now it's AJ's turn. Um, so what does orgasmic living mean to you? So uh, that's a great question. And first of all, thanks for having me on. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, orgasmic living, my idea of that has definitely changed um, since I've been with you. Um, you know, first glance, when you first hear the word orgasmic, we have all these, uh, you know, like, like she was saying, like cultural, um, you know, meanings behind that. And people can take that in many different ways. But Um, for me, orgasmic living is really just, you know, like just living in tune with your body, becoming in tune with what your body needs and just living life in a, in a very intuitive way. Um, like for instance, like, you know, the last year or so I've become more of like, um, of an intuitive eater and we're so kind of like conditioned that we need to have, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And this is just an example. Like I need to eat at this time and I've realized over the years with eating, it doesn't need to be that way. And some, some days I will have three meals a day and other days 
I'll fast until five o'clock because that's what my body needs. And then I'll have a nice big meal at the end of the day. And then I just feel great. So I kind of just, you know, to me, orgasmic living is kind of taking it day by day and just really tuning into the needs and wants of your body. In that moment. I love that. Yeah. I love that. It's interesting when you guys were talking, I was, I was remembering when I first created orgasmic living in the company and I went to open a business account <laughs> at the bank and and the first time I did it, right? Like, What's the name of the company? And I was like, Orgasmic Living. And I saw what it created in their yes. universe. And I was like, oh, shit. Because <laughs> he was very uncomfortable. Uh, just the word brought up energies of discomfort. And even now when I make calls or I'm whatever for the business and oh, what's your company name? Orgasmic Living. I can feel the trickle of just like, you know, <laughs> in the other person's universe, I'm not a disruptor or anything like that at all. Um, what I love about what both of you have said is tuning into the body's needs moment by moment and really listening to what the body is asking for in that moment. And what I've learned over the years and with the example that AJ just gave is that it changes energy is always in movement, right? And we are basically energetic beings. Our bodies have all of this energy that's available. And that energy is always, always, always moving. So what worked for me at 10 a.m. is not going to work for me at 4 p.m. And what worked for me yesterday is not going to, may not, may not work for me uh, tomorrow. Um, and an, a lot of the ways that I work with clients is about really tuning into what is the energy of this moment right here, right now? What do I need? What does my body need? And how can I provide that for her and for myself? Um, and I want to shift the conversation a little bit because I know that you both are uh, I know you and I have had lots of conversations about this, May, and AJ and I have lots of conversations about this. And I think it's an important conversation, especially now that it's the beginning of the year, we're kind of coming, coming out of our holiday hangover. And it's like, okay, now what do we do? Plus, it's been like two years of insanity, you know, right now. Um, I would love to talk about like self-care, um, orgasmic self-care. Why not? Like, like, what does that mean? What does that look like? And for me, what's really alive, and I'll sort of put this out there and then you, you all can, can chime in, comment, put in your brilliance, I'd appreciate it. What's really alive for me right now today is that my daily self-care practice, which includes a lot of different things and we can give the, the people listening some examples for that a little bit later. But what's really alive is that my, if I do not fully commit to my daily self-care practice, which includes things for my body and things for my being and things for my relationship with the divine, I mean, at my self-care practice, you know, it also changes every day. But if I don't commit to that and do it, I am just, I'm off. I'm off center. I'm off center for the day. I'm not as sharp, you know, um, uh, I get carried away easily. Yesterday, we got really carried away with, with something that we're going to do another show on. Um, but I'm curious, and I know both of you have such expertise on this, like self-care, it's just something that I've been doing for so long. And I do encourage my clients to build rituals and routines and morning and, you know, whatnot. So what do you guys know about self-care? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's your, what's your two cents on self-care? <laughs> yeah. So I love that AJ is a health coach because I, I currently work. So I have a private business called Malama, which in Hawaiian means to take care of. So it really is the core of wellness. And um, so I, I have a health coach for my private business who works with my clients, but I also work at a clinic, an integrative clinic in Temecula. And I am like a glorified health coach there. I mean, I do a I would say a higher, maybe a little bit higher than just giving advice, but um, I love that their coaching is involved in honing someone's intuition. Even mm. self-care feels like it should be really intuitive, mm. but it's something that we still have to learn. And sometimes it does mean 
outside people guiding us to become intuitive. And so I just want to piggyback off and answer your question at the same time, Patty, but piggyback off what AJ said about that intuitive eating and intuitive, you know, um, living of like, you know, when do I need to fuel? When do I need to rest? I know for me, um, I'm a little hard headed and I also have ADD. So like, I actually am not that intuitive, um, to begin with. And it's taken a lot of time. I have worked on being intuitive and I, I realize it's not automatic the way I wish it were for everybody. And for some people, they're more in tune than others. Uh, that's for sure. You know, um, but I would say the more disconnected you've been from your body, the more dysfunction has happened within the body, the less the intuitive side can freely flow. Right. So I'll just give you an example. Um, I, I have some clients who are eating all over the map because they work night shift or, um, or they're, you know, working days and nights and, or they've gotten into bad habits, like Pavlov dogs, like conditioning, like they're eating at 10 PM and going to bed at 2 AM. And we know that like, that shouldn't be intuitive that their body needs to be doing that. Like probably not, but because they've trained their body to do that, their stomach literally growls at that hour. Right. So it becomes like, wait, is this intuition or is this conditioning? Um, so I think part of also what I love doing is playing a little bit of detective. I think sometimes outside input helps us hone that intuition and hone our self-care routine. So to give you an example, like for me, I suffered postpartum two out of my three pregnancies. I was beating myself up about why I was so anxious. I mean, I knew I was sleep deprived and I actually needed to seek a health coach at the end of my second, um, when my second baby turned one, I got diagnosed with postpartum. And my doctor said, I am so sorry. It's taken you a year to get diagnosed. Um, but here we are <laughs> and you need help. And I was like, oh, I do this for a living, but I actually need a health coach to teach me how to take care of myself. And she literally would sit down with me and be like, basically telling me, you need to rest. And I was like, I know I need to rest. You see these bags in my eyes, but I needed someone to tell me that and right. help me orchestrate where does rest show up in this craziness of my life. And she was like, can you get your husband to take the kids? Do you need to hire a sitter? Like, what is the logistical thing of how to execute on this self-care? And once I got into that routine, I was like, oh, this is a lot more automatic. But even morning rituals have drastically shifted for me where I have to sometimes have an outside person say like, mate, that's not practical for you to go on a run, have an hour, you know, reading the Bible and, and, you know, having your spiritual time and then go and make breakfast for your kids when you need sleep. Right. And so it's that the intuition, like for me, I use a lot of biofeedback as well. So I think that has honed intuition of like my little device tells me like, your recovery, you had four hours of sleep and it was all light sleep and your heart rate variability tanked to 26. And so there are days where I'm like, I plan to go on a long hike or I planned a really good workout, but not intuitively, but kind of from outside, you know, I'm like, I feel like I should slow down today. So sometimes it is helpful to have a coach or to have some feedback or even have people, loved ones around you say, like, give you some guidance on that self-care. Um, and it has to be sustainable is, is the, the other thing I want to say. I have so many people come to my office. They're like, I want to do these 10 things for self-care. And I'm like, dude, your 10 things are actually stressing you out <laughs> and they're not actually uh, executable, all 10 of them. So why don't we scale it back to two and you can still see some mileage out of those. So. Yeah, I have, I have, a, I, we were talking about this the other day. I have like a list of 20 things at least but every day I pick and choose which ones today mm -hmm. I'm going to do all 20 unless I really need to. And I need that break and that rest. And then my self-care routines just becomes a self-care day. You know, that is possible. Of course, I mean, I don't have kids. I don't, I don't have a partner, but I don't have a husband, you know, like, <laughs> so I do get that. Um, it, and it is, it's different for everyone. And it is really based on what you need in that moment and in that day. And I love that you're talking about like that sort of outside. Sometimes you do need someone to reflect back to you. And I would take that a step further. Yes, receive that reflection and still check in with yourself. Right. Because I think that intuition is something that we can develop. Yes. Right. I have ADD too. And it's part of it's part of what I use 
right? Mm -hmm. In my intuition, I include it in my intuition. And that's just a little different way of, of functioning with, you know, um, um, ADD or ADHD or anything like that. But I do want to hear from AJ about what do you know about self-care routines? Uh, and what, it, what, what would you like to share? <laughs> um, so to go off what you guys were just saying about intuition, I, I truly believe that everybody is born with intuition, but we learn to detach from that from a young age. Um, and then we kind of grow up as adults being little kids in adults' bodies, um, not really knowing how to operate in the world in terms of giving yourself what you really need. And um, for me, like self-care, it's really, again, just about connecting back to myself and understanding you know, what we are in this universe and we're not just, you know, machines going from thing to thing, you know, just stuffing food down the pipe and getting five hours of sleep and waking up with a coffee and doing it again the next day. That's a recipe to get burnt out over time. And that's where, you know, these physical symptoms and even, you know, mental, you know, ways of thinking, anxiety, these things start coming up because it's really the body's way of communicating to you, hey, you know, something's not in alignment here and this isn't working and you need to, you need to figure this out. And through my path from a young age, I always kind of saw how really society is kind of sick in a way in terms of the way we medicate things. Now, whether we're on actual medication, which is literally blocking the receptors in your brain to feel the pain or whatever that, that is, which is a signal from your body that is trying to get your attention but it can also be things like the need to overachieve or being addicted to your phone. Um, really just doing everything out here, but not ever coming back inside. Um, so for me, like on my journey, the, some simple things that have helped me uh, first and foremost would be food, what we're putting into our bodies, um, hydration, you know, drinking clean water is important. Um, I think, Anybody out there, um, you know, if you're on your health journey or if you're looking to get on your health journey, I think one of the first things you should do is get some sort of clean water because a lot of the chemicals in our water are really, it's, you know, it's not good. It really shouldn't be there. And um, also sleep is very important. Um, again, from a young age, I was never really able to function on like five, six hours of sleep. Like even growing up, I would have like sleepovers with my friends. Like kids would just get up the next day and just be off to the races, off to their basketball game or whatever it is. And I'm like, I need to go home. <laughs> I need a nap. I had bags under my eyes as a little kid. So, and that kind of continued out, you know, through college of just partying and not really listening to my body and just waking up the next day and getting after it. And I think, you know, I think those times are important because it teaches you of where you're out of alignment and it's through not being in alignment where you can come into alignment. And I think everybody needs to, you know, have their journey on, on what that really means. Um, but, you know, yeah, for me over the years, I've become more um, attuned to things like yoga and breath work um, and even just going out into nature and just finding ways to just silence the monkey mind so that when that finally resides, when you can find ways to find gaps in between your thoughts, because what most people don't realize is we just constantly go from one thought to the next and we're actually just on autopilot and we're just basically kind of like machines just reacting to stimuli. So if you can find a way, whatever works for you, um, and just really find a gap in between your thinking. And when you allow your mind to subside, or for my experience, that's when I can listen to my higher self, AKA intuition come in through me and then give me exactly what I need at that moment, so. Beautiful, I love it. Yeah, that's, you know, that's huge. I think COVID has forced a lot of us to like, mm. Yeah, we weaned off of a lot of things that kept us going from one thing to the next. And it's very uncomfortable to go from being totally stimulated all the time yeah. to having times where you're like, you know, you have to be in your body and you have to be thinking, you know, processing some of the maybe grief or anger or emotions that come up that we just 
again, kind of either sweep under the positivity rug or forget about because we busy ourselves. And I, I do believe AJ that you're right. That like we as a society need some healing and there's some sickness. Not only is our food supply and our water tainted, it does not set us up for success, but also just the pace of life is so fast. We never get to check in with ourselves, you know, and even feel how tired we are. Like there's caffeine for that. There's, you know, um, there's tons of like screen time when people are, they just zone out, not realizing they're actually tired and they can't do anything else, but look at a screen when they really need to be just shutting down the screen and laying down. Right. So it is true. I feel like it is almost a blessing to have something like the pandemic hit us as a society and force us to spend a little more time checking in and spend a little more time doing things out, you know, in nature. I heard that like, like all the campgrounds these days are like booked out six months in advance because everyone is kind of doing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> can we just get out in nature? Like <laughs> oh, <I love laughs> everyone's that. like, what else can we do? But it right. is so therapeutic, you know? Um, and yeah. we've gotten away from that so much. I mean, we just, there's, there's a book I was reading and he was uh, hypothesizing that we actually can turn energy from the sun into usable energy. We only, you know, back in the day, we thought only plants could do photosynthesis. And it's not that we do photosynthesis, but there's actually some research to show we do get energy from being outside, like the ions, the, the heat, actual heat energy, um, that we can convert some of that into usable energy, which is fascinating because how disconnected have we been from even, you know, yeah. all I was, of that. Right. So we, we were indoors all day yesterday and today I was like, okay, we're doing this thing. And then we're going out, we're getting out of the apartment Good we for you. Uh, and, and, and all of that. I, I want to circle, circle back around a little bit and, and maybe give people listening more ideas for what self-care could be. But I do want to talk a little bit about sleep because mm. we are, we can be so hard on ourselves, right? Like you're talking about just shut down the computer. What's really happening is that you're tired and you need a nap, but we have been conditioned to push, 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 push. Right. And I think that this is also like you were saying, part of what the pandemic was teaching us is how to just like, exhale. Yes. And I know, especially when there's a lot of things changing for me in my life. And there's a lot of like, maybe old patterns releasing or old conditioning, uh, conditioning that I was asleep to that I'm waking up to. So, interestingly enough, I'm waking up to it, but my body actually needs a lot of sleep during those big times of change. Mm. And I remember when this first started happening, I'd be like, but I can't sleep. I have so much to do, but I can't take a nap. I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And I've got to do this. And then when I really just surrendered all of the, I got to do this. And I allowed myself to really take a nap, go to bed. So, sometimes I go to bed at like 8 PM. Like it's just, it, it, you know, um, and I really surrendered to the rest and the restoration and the regeneration that my body was asking for. Yes. That's the key. <clears throat> tired and you feel like you need a nap your body is literally asking for you to take her to bed or him and and restore regenerate and when i really started doing that and really getting that into my into my psyche above the all the to do's i would wake up and i would have so much more energy and everything flowed, like everything that I was trying to do before yes. that wasn't working, boom, boom, boom. It would just get done like so easy. So I just really want to kind of put sleep, napping, take a nap, nice at the top of the list of what self-care, you know, we woke up at like 5.30 and he was just like, I got up too early. I got to go back to bed. I was like, do it, you know? Um, and he woke up different. And I, then I went and took a little nap and then I woke up different. Right. So, so there's just something really magical about the body. Wow. Yeah. Right. I love being as a being, we could go and go and go and go because we're infinite and we have infinite amounts of energy and we have infinite a lot of that, but our bodies like listening to our bodies, it's really like, what does your body need? Yes. So uh, what else, what else for you guys, um, for me, movement is like so important, you know, can, I, um, can we riff on 
sleep real yeah. quick before we move on? Cause yeah. this, I think we could spend a whole hour talking and I don't want to do that with you all, but this is a, <laughs> this is a huge part of why I think a lot of women feel like low libido or just slightly depressed or have weight issues, hormone issues, and they never, ever put their finger on. Could it be that I am too worn out to have a fully present yeah. experience in my body? Could it be that my relationship with my husband and my intimacy with my husband could be fixed if I could work on this restorative side of my hard wiring, you know, like I, I think so many of us go looking for answers everywhere else. And then sleep, we still evolutionarily, like if sleep wasn't so necessary, we would not be spending half of our lives supine, super vulnerable to the outside, you know, like it would have been evolved out. Ooh, excuse me. So, I mean, sleep is like indispensable and on multiple fronts. I, I just want to recommend one book that really changed my views on sleep. Cause I'm such a, I, I like the science too. Um, Matthew Walker, he's mm -hmm. British and has a really nice, sexy, um, accent. If you want to listen to his Ted talk too, but he, he has a book called why, why do we sleep? I have it right here. Why do we sleep? Yeah. <clears throat> and huge game changer for me, like reading that in the midst of like being sleep deprived with newborns. And I, I literally would, um, I didn't know you could do this, but micro sleep. Have you guys heard of micro sleeping? It's when you, your brain falls asleep for a microsecond with your eyes open. And I would micro sleep while driving to work, um, oh. in my newborn phase. Like, and it was super scary. Cause I, I knew my eyes were open cause I was forcing them open, but my brain was actually like taking little, you know, like shutting down in, in microseconds It's super dangerous. And Anyways, he talks about all of that, but, um, just from a like total health perspective, yeah, you will not be able to reach your health goals. If sleep is not sufficient. And for everyone, it's different. Like my husband can run off five to six hours of sleep. Literally you cannot tell he's tired. And for me, I do need nine. Like I actually have to literally sell him on reminding him like you need five and I need nine. Like it, I am not lying when I say there's a discrepancy, like I need way more to be functional. And part of my postpartum was serious, seriously, just related to sleep deprivation. And I did not realize it wasn't going to be a the ha antidepressant that was going to fix me. It was literally just like what you all said, going back to bed when I could going to bed early and not maybe sacrificing, um, either exercise in the morning or catching up on emails at night or even family time. I literally sacrifice time with my family to go and sleep when no one else is sleeping and it's made a world of difference. So I think it's but kind I, of a sales pitch. Cause yeah. you, you said, you said sacrifice time with my family for sleep, but mm -hmm. let's flip that because it's actually, you can't be really present right. and engaged with your family. So you're not sacrificing your yes. family. Taking that nap is actually putting your family first. Yes. And that's like the mindset shift, especially I think for women. And I'd love to hear what your perspective is and as a man, right? It's not a sacrifice. It's actually what's needed so that you can show up. And I think that let's not even, not even just family. Like for me, that's for my business, right? I don't right. have kids or anything like that. So my, my business is, is my, my baby and, and my family. And so if I'm not fully rejuvenated and rested, then I can't show up for my clients. I can't show up with, for my friends. I can't show up for my yes. partner, you know? Um, and I'd like to hear, I just want to say one last thing, because it's really important also like the kind of sleep for me, for me personally, I need to be cozy. I need it to be quiet. I need it to be dark. Mm. I need it to just be like total silence, you know, noises sort of wake me up in the middle of the night or, you know, I don't really like to have my phone right next to me when I go to sleep. Um, I, there's just, it's not just like sleep. So then taking it deeper. Okay. What's the kind of sleep that you need? Yes. You know, for me, sometimes a 20 minute nap makes me more tired and more sort of out of it. Right. So it's always being, this is, this is orgasmic living, right? This is connecting with your body. Like what does she need or he right here, right now? Okay. If I lay down for 20 minutes, is that going to make it better? Or do I need something else? Maybe what I actually need is a hot bath. 
right? To just like a hot bath in total privacy with the lights off, candles, smelly things, you know, uh, no one interrupting me, no one coming in. Maybe that's what I need, right? So it's all about exploration, exploration yes. about self-care. Um, and it specifically, we're using sleep as an example. I love that. Experience to add? <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would say just a simple thing, just get out into nature. Mm, yeah. Like really just make the effort to get out into nature at least a couple times a week. Um, and really like back to the sun, like sun, the sun is, I mean, not to sound too woo woo, but I believe that the earth is a living being and the sun is a living being. Mm -hmm. And you can actually receive information from the sun if you're willing to. I found that to kind of work if you really just sit there and kind of tune into it. and. It's really just the intention behind it. But for me, getting out into nature really helps me connect back to myself, essentially. Mm. Um, and really, again, talking about finding a gap in between the thoughts. Mm. That, that's a way to do that is just for me, like I, I would go out into nature and I would just set the intention to just allow myself to notice everything and just kind of come from a place of being non-attached and not allowing myself to carry the stories in my head that we have to deal with in the everyday life. I just try to let all that go down the drain. Um, and one thing that I found to be really powerful and also really simple the last year or so is, is barefoot grounding in nature mm -hmm. is literally just walking barefoot. And that's one of the simplest things that you can do. Really all you need is about 20 minutes a day. I like to go barefoot. Um, if you can, like in the dirt, the grass is good too. Pavement's not as great, but if you can just get your feet on the earth, it's just a really natural way to actually draw up, um, you know, electrons from the earth. Um, and we are electrical beings. So it's kind of like you're plugging in your outlet into earth and you're allowing energy to come up in through your feet into your body, which is very, um, anti-inflammatory and it's just a great way to help kind of loosen up your your body literally energetically um so to me it's kind of like filling my cup up from the earth and then i'm also allowing myself to kind mm. of empty myself into the mm. earth mm. and i used to think you know this was all woo woo and there's other types of practices you can do with the sun that i'm not going to get into but <laughs> um just you know just walking barefoot in the sun in nature try it out a couple, couple days a week and just see if you notice a difference because I did for myself. And there was a period this past summer where I was walking barefoot every day for like an hour a day, like just trying to get out into nature. And I completely, I can feel my, I, my health was changing. I, I felt it. Yeah. So it's just yeah. a very simple thing. And like health and being healthy and finding ways to be healthy has become so taboo in today's mm -hmm. time. But it's really, it's just the basic things. It's, yeah. you know, getting out in nature, drinking water, eating healthy food, moving your body, getting sleep. If you're going to the doctor before you, you do those things, really, you know, food, diet and, um, and sleep, you know, it's the doctor can't fix you if you're not doing the things that you should be doing. Right. And yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for bringing the earth into the conversation. Um, I, I want to, uh, uh, I, can uh, I say one thing yeah, while you're thinking, let Patty, just, let yeah, me just go ahead. the earth thing yeah, and, yeah. and then I'm, I want to hear what you have to say. It's just taking me a second to get all of this, uh, the thoughts put into cohesive sentences <laughs> because I started looking at this. I've always worked with the earth as well and and tapping into that energy and and being present with the earth and allowing the earth to contribute energy and one of the things that i became aware of in the last year which i hadn't really been paying attention to because i'm so like i started wondering like why am i so obsessed about these bodies like mm. why am i so obsessed about uh empowering women and men to live orgasmically with these bodies. And when you bring in the earth, um, these bodies that we get to play with, right? That's how I see it. These bodies that we get to play with on this planet, like we would not be able 
to do any of this on any other planet in our universe, right? This planet is, is it, it, it's, it's this planet, it's the earth. It doesn't exist anywhere else. And these bodies would not be able to live on any other planet. And when I look at it that way, in terms of like orgasmic living and living a joyful, pleasurable life, like we chose to come here to these bodies, to this planet, right? And so taking care of these bodies, having fun with these bodies, enjoying these bodies and including the earth in that is, is a huge piece for me of self-care. Like, I'm always like, how much fun can I have? Like, what adventure can I create? Everything that we have on this planet is for these bodies. Mm -hmm. the, if we did not have these bodies, we would not need sleep. We would not need clothes. Mm -hmm. We would not need food because we would just be beings popping around the universe without these bodies. Mm -hmm. Right. And so for me, I, it just makes me smile. So like for me, this whole self-care journey, this whole orgasmic living journey is about how can I enjoy my life that I'm creating here on this planet with this body? And how can I include the earth in that and the sun and the wind and that like all of that, all of that nature is, is the earth. So I just kind of want to drop that super woo woo. Woo woo is <laughs> Um, that super woo woo kind of point of view of, about, you know, cause I think a lot of people, um, feel or talk about or treat their bodies. Like it's just this thing that you have to deal with, you know, and this thing that like, oh, if I could just be a spirit, you know, everything would be so much easier. Uh, but it's really not like that. Like these bodies are so grateful for us because they would not have life if it wasn't for us, the being. Right? And we were entrusted with this body. Yes. It, you yes. know, yes. it's, um, it's oh, wonderful. Take, I it, take it away. <laughs> yeah, no, I was going to say with the earth thing, you know, I, I recently, um, so I have three little boys and just watching them play, they love dirt, you know, like they gravitate yeah. towards, they went to the beach yesterday and they're just, they could spend the whole day just digging holes in the sand and filling the holes back up. And, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we go every weekend to a farm just so they can play in real dirt. That's organic. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the dirt at the park, like they spray that park. It's so sad, right? Like mm -hmm. our kids and, and the playgrounds are rubber composite, whatever synthetic material. So that, you know, whatever it's like, can you even find real dirt these days? Right. It's like, it's a, it's a scarce commodity, which is crazy. Like how much concrete has covered up the dirt and like even to find grass that hasn't been sprayed. Right. It's like, ah, um, but it, it is true. Like we, like it, and, and I don't think it's, the, I don't think it's bad to go woo woo -wee because I do believe that like we have a spirit, this body contains that spirit. And if the, the container is not healthy, you, you really can't have any kind of like what AJ was saying, like you can't connect with the divine, right? You're just, you're so caught up in like the sickness and the discomfort. Think about like chronic pain. Like how do you meditate with chronic pain? It's really hard, you know? So all of these things like are just a reminder of like, yes, they are gifts to us. We are and we were meant to be all connected. Like even our, the energy coming through zoom, like it's therapeutic for me, you know, and anytime we get connected with other beings, other, anything else that was created, put on this earth for us, um, we do get energetically charged. Right. And so it's just, it's just wonderful. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a um, flower child. I wish I was more outdoors than I am. Um, but like I have, invested in a grounding mat. So at least I'm like eight hours in front of the computer talking to a patient or whatever. Like I'm at least not picking up all those ions and just holding them. Cause that that's not good. Right. And then I know that's not as free as dirt standing on dirt, but it's still better than nothing. Um, and then recently I got into like live plants. Like I, I used to have fake plants and now I have all live ones because I'm home. Well, besides that grass up there, but I'm like, now I love touching the dirt and like planting the plants and watering them and then watching them grow. And so it's like, there's something really, like you said, therapeutic about connecting, connecting yeah. with everything else that was created by 
the same hand, you know, including our bodies and really honoring like this body is not supposed to be abused. It's not supposed to be my slave. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's very mutual, you know, the body loves us and we love it back. And if we hate it, it hates, you know, it kind of wants to hate us back a little bit. Like there's this like, kind of like you can feel that tension between two couples when they're like not on the same page. You can definitely feel that when there's someone who's not on the same page, you know, with their body and, and we're all works in progress. You know, I, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm inspired now, Patty, to go and take a bath with some candles and have a nap today. Cause this is my day to do that. And I, I definitely feel like I need it. So it's just so nice to hear, even to have that reframe. And thank you. It's that it's not a sacrifice. It is how we end up showing up as our best selves to even serve more. Um, Totally. Thank you. We cannot, cannot, I mean, this is a well-known saying, but you can't give from an empty cup. Yes. And although we have been like, you know, that word selfish, right? That we all, we're all afraid of, of, I don't want to be selfish. Let me just over give. Mm. But then when you're empty, you know, I know I've had times with AJ where I'm like, okay, I've reached my limit. Like I've, I, I need to go fill up now and we'll yes. literally take space and time apart and, you know, and, and we, we do what we need to do to fill each other so that we can be there for each other. Yes. Um, and, and we're, we're coming to our hour. So I want to definitely give us a chance to give our free gift to the people listening. But for those of you um, who are sort of like, what do I do for self-care? My number one tip for for that would be self-care with your body is um, tune into your five senses and nourish them, right? So what are the smells that feel good in your body? Mm. What are the tastes that when you taste it, it feels good in your body? What do you look at around you that when you look at it, lights you up and makes you feel Mm. good? What are the, the clothes, the blankets? I have so many soft blankets. It's like, crazy any corner of of our place you'll find a soft blanket that you can cuddle up with if you need some like soft tender touch so as you are uh choosing what your self-care routine i just want to invite you to include your body in that Mm -hmm. and and activate your body through your five senses and and soften into the pleasure of having a body (laughs) because if you didn't have a body you would not be able to enjoy any of those things that I mentioned so that's my super number one tip on how to create or how to how to play with and discover what your self-care routine is going to look like for Mm -hmm. you um if you um either of you have any final thoughts and then may if you'll talk to us a little bit about your free gift for everyone and then we'll talk about our free gift for everyone and and then we'll call it a wrap (laughs) i wanted to say i am so thankful you invited me on this uh conversation it's really near and dear to me and Mm -hmm. um i think we're all we're all serving from a place of experience of you know what it means to not do self-care <laughs> and then you can see the black and white, you know? Um, so the trial and error, um, I think so many people want to just do it and do it right the first time, but I love how you said play and explore, um, because that's, it, it's a journey, right? It's not a straight freeway, like a to Z get it done. Like we want it microwave, but it is a journey and there is trial and error. And the, the more rounds you go, the more trials, the, the better you get at it. And the more you can also model that for the people around you. I know one thing I'll say that has motivated me a lot about um, just work-life balance and self-care is I don't want my kids to think that um, it's normal to be a burned out disgruntled adult and that that's what they are supposed to be when they grow up, you know what I mean? Like just get a job and burn yourself out and be really angry at your family all the time and just be a grump, you know, like that's because they're, they're watching us. So at least for, I I know that's, again, I'm always framing it from that, but that's kind of the real thing right now is I'm like, I'm role modeling all of this, whether I might say something different, like you need to go to bed now, but if I'm not going to bed, it's like, (laughs) I'm modeling, you know, stay up and burn the candle, you know? So anyways, but my free gift. Um, so I, 
I do a lot of work with helping people with their metabolism energetically. And I, I don't do it from a quick fix standpoint. I do it from more of a, the nerdy, sciencey, cellular standpoint. So my free gift to everyone is 12 nutrients that really nourish your metabolism. And it's a guide of where to get all those 12 nutrients in, in our food supply. So a lot of people are like, CoQ10, I must have to pop a pill. It's like, no, actually you can get you know, you can get some of these things from salmon, from your organ meats, all these things. So um, that guide is super helpful. I tell people, put it on your fridge and, or keep it on your phone. And when you're out and about shopping or meal planning, you could be like, hmm, what are some nutrients my metabolism really, you know, would love, crave to have that I haven't had in a while. So um, yeah. you can get that on my website. You just go to May Tom RD, and that stands for registered dietitian. May like the month, Tom like Tom and Jerry. That's what I tell everyone. Super simple. Um, dot com, and it'll be on uh, uh, the front homepage. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Thank you, May. I love it. I'm gonna download that free gift, and we'll put the link somewhere with this video and all of you know. You'll find it, but May Tom RD dot com. There you go. Um, any last thoughts? brilliances on self-care and then I'll talk about our free gift. Um, I would say anything worth having isn't going to come overnight mm. and um, whatever you're looking for in your life, whether it's more connection to be healthier, um, just self-discovery, just be patient with yourself and just like, you know, just experiment and understand that there's no one size fits all approach out there. And anybody that's, uh, if you, you know, I think you should seek advice from all the people out there, all the practitioners, all the, the ways of thinking, but just be wary of any, um, this is my way and this, this works and you have to do it this way. Mm. Just really use your discernment. I think that's the key word is discernment because only you know what's best for you. So I, I would say just experiment and, and just have fun with it and understand that um, self, self care, self love, um, you know, none of us here have it figured out, but it's a journey and we're just sharing our journeys with other people so that, you know, we can help. That's like the most brilliant self-care tip ever. <laughs> Top of the list. Be kind to yourself. Yeah. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so for us, our free gift Ah, uh, gosh. Um, where are you on your journey to living orgasmically? And we are going to be working with couples on how to create orgasmic relationships. But before you can even think about creating orgasmic relationships, you really need to know what orgasmic living is for you and for your body. You have to come to the relationship as a whole, full person. Um, and the other person has to come as a whole full person. And those two whole people then create the relationship. And so I would like to invite you to check out orgasmiclivingquiz.com. There I have listed the 10 pillars to living orgasmically. These are the 10 things that I have seen over the years working with people that if you can get into mastering these 10 pillars, then you're on your journey to living orgasmically, which the journey never ends, which is like the best part ever, right? You can always discover something new to be orgasmic about. <laughs> and then, so get on, get on your journey to living orgasmically at orgasmiclivingquiz.com and stay tuned for more on how to create orgasmic relationships. May Tom, I adore you. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your brilliance. And, you know, I don't talk about having kids because I don't have any. So I so appreciate you bringing that to the show and to the listeners and to um, just putting it in the pot, in the orgasmic living pot. Who would have thought? And my, my love. pleasure. Thank you. You're thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I adore you. I'm so grateful for you. And how does it get any better than this? Thank you all for listening. Uh, the links will be somewhere and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye for now.